Back up the hill, maybe we'll see some of them. They sure do have little feet. Uh-huh. Hey, Nevada, what do you say we put the trap over there? Think there's any rabbits around here? Oh, sure there are. There's been a lot of them around here. We must be at least a couple of miles from the cabin, so... I doubt if these rabbits down here have any opinions of people, one way or another. <laughs> there, we're all baited up. Come on. Hey, what do you say we put it right here? We can cover it over with these pine needles and those bushes and... If you cover it up, how will the rabbits find it? Well, if a rabbit sees it, he won't go in. Rabbits aren't that stupid. We gotta make them think it's just a tunnel through the bushes. You know? What if the door hits him on the head? Well, no rabbit's long enough to be in the door and touch the bait at the same time. If there's any chance of hurting a rabbit, we wouldn't set the trap. All we want to do is make friends with him. Won't his family miss him? Oh, they'll miss him, I guess, but... Well, just think of all the stories you'll have to tell all the other rabbits when he gets home again. Hey, that looks pretty good, huh? Now, what do you say we get back up that hill and see if our squaw's got that grub rustled up yet? Okay. <laughs> uh, come on, boy. Yo. I like vacations. Why don't we take a lot of them? <laughs> You'd be satisfied with just this one, if you knew my boss, Mr. Spellman. Jerry, show up. Get hold of Eddie. Tell him I'm sorry, but he's got to come back. But Eddie's on vacation. Eddie's on vacation. I need Eddie here 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. But he's just started his vacation. Couldn't you get... As soon as you get Eddie, bring me the file on Campbell Cherokee. They've only had enough time to get to Deep Springs is all. It isn't fair to ask him to come back. It's mean. It's business. Well... I need Eddie. Get him. I don't have his number. You didn't leave him? Not with me. All right, what's the name of the place they're staying? I don't know. It's just Deep Springs. You don't know? You ride to work with Eddie. Your daddy collects rent from him. Eddie's your upstairs neighbor. Saturdays, you shop with his wife. You're close personal friends, but you don't know where they were going. They just said Deep Springs. They didn't say any place there. And if they did, I don't remember. Eddie recommended you for this job. One good turn deserves another, huh? You said you got a card from him. Where is it? I left it at home. Well, call home, find out the name of the place. Yes, sir. Baby mama? I never said that. Will you wait a minute? It's too long. Fly boy. Mm -hmm. Hello. But Judy. No, I think it's around here someplace, Lamb Chop. I think your papa has it in his pocket. Well, Miss Do It All, I see you're still holding the baby. 
Hey, I'll Mike. ask him, honey. Tom, that's right wonderful. Here. Find yourself a job. Oh, this guy's murdered. He's driving me crazy. Eddie's office is trying to get in touch with him. Have you still got that postcard? They want to find out where he's staying. Mm, sees me, he would have thought to leave his address at the office. That would have been safety first, don't you know? Oh, here it says, uh, Crystal Cabins. Uh, Lamb Chop? It's Crystal Cabins. Okay, Mom, well, thank you. Bye. Well? She threw it away. You're lying. You want me to talk to your mother? Now, you're not going in there and pout. You and me, eh? That's a hot one. Now, that's enough. Did I scare you? If I scared you, why did you hug me? I don't know. Well, you've got to stop it. First thing you know, we'll open a can of beans we can't eat, kid. I'm a married man. I've got a daughter and a son, both older than you, and I've got a wife that makes me jump through a flaming hoop. Get yourself a boyfriend your own age. Now, Where's Eddie? Crystal Cabin. It's Deep Springs, right? Oh. Boy, I'm beat. Go on up and get your mom. Hello, the rabbit trap has just collapsed. Okay. <sighs> hey, Mom. Look at the old bucket I found. Where's your dad? He said he just collapsed. Come on out here, honey. What are you doing? Just breathing, that's all. We're going to catch a rabbit. You are, huh? Where'd you set the trap? Out there someplace. About five or ten miles, I guess. Why so far? Well, because, well, Dad told me, but I forget. <laughs> we want to catch a rabbit and get to be its friend and show him what nice people people are. And we didn't want to start with one who already has an opinion on the subject. Did you get lonely? Sort of. Hey, lay flat on your back and look straight up. You can actually feel the world turning. Boy, look at that. You can't see stars like that where we live. Duncan, go on and get ready for bed, and then we'll have supper. Ah, uh, go on. Ah, oh, gee, seems like all I do is get ready for bed. Will you read me some Hiawatha? All right, maybe a couple of pages after supper. I'll go on, hop into your PJs. Don't forget now. As if he'd let me. You know how I feel like right now? My old self. Like when I came back from the army. You know, the, the vibration's gone right through me. It's funny you saying that. This is the day you came home. The exact day, ten years ago. Well, son of a gun, so it is. The twelfth. <laughs> what made you think of that? I found this old dress in the trunk the other day. Remember, it's the one I wore that night. That ever-loving night. Look, remember I spilled sparkling burgundy all down the front? A red badge of courage. I was gonna wait till you noticed. But I felt like telling you now. Yeah, these stars will do it to you. Planned a little celebration. There's a bottle of burgundy in the well getting cold. Well, how'd you get that up here without me finding it? I smuggled it in in Duncan's suitcase. You're pretty great, you know that? You know, they say anything you want, you can see in the stars. Probably the Big Dipper was discovered by some guy who was dying for a drink. When I was a kid, I used to see the outline of horses every time I looked up. Right up 
there. I can almost see. There she is. Huh? That's Kathy. Can't you see? Who's Kathy? Kathy happens to be a baby. As a matter of fact, she's going to be Duncan's sister. Oh, that Kathy. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see her up there. Mm -hmm. About time we brought her down to earth. Well, I mean, she's got a long life ahead of her. Well, frankly, I just can't see her. You will. Keep talking. Do I have to? Who is it? I got a call for you, Mr. Cold, from Los Angeles. A Mr. Spellman. He doesn't know we're here. Well, he said to tell you that something came up and he needs you pretty bad back at the office. What? Did he say when? Eight o'clock tomorrow morning, he said. Tomorrow morning? Uh, are you sure that's what he said? I brought the message. Here it is. I wrote it down. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot. Good night. Good night. Well, I didn't say where we were staying. Oh, I sent Judy a card. I guess that did it. Well, we could say we didn't get the message. But we did get it. Well, you, you could call him back and... Oh, honey, if he needs me, he needs me. I bet I need you worse than he does. That man hadn't come in when he did. I think... I think I'd have talked you into inviting Kathy to join us right now. Money or no money. I must admit, for a minute there, I didn't know what time it was. I still don't. I've never gone into this with you before, but this time... Do you know how many weeks paid vacation you've had in eight years? Three, including last week, in eight years. What, what does he think you are? What does he think we are? Last year and the year before that, he couldn't spare you at all. I, I got a nice bonus. So did Jerry. So did Maddie and Pete. They got vacations, too. But this was a special deal. Special for them. Oh, I was so proud of you when you asked for this vacation and got it. Two weeks paid vacation. The beginning of a new era. That's a laugh. There was such a thing as company loyalty. The company doesn't own you. Well, I gotta prove to him he can depend on me. He knows he can depend on you to lie down any time you need somebody to walk on. That's not true, and you know it. I'm in line for project engineer any day now. Seems to be a mighty long line. All right, so he promoted Pete ahead of me, but Pete's got a diploma he can wave around. 
You know, you don't think you deserve to get ahead. Are you out of your mind? I you think anybody with more education than you ought to be ahead of you. Look, if you haven't got a degree, you've got to depend on seniority. A, rep a reputation for dependability. That takes time. I know it does, Eddie, but it was ten years ago that we dreamed up Duncan and Kathy and a whole house full of kids. A house that was all ours, Eddie. So many plans we had. So many things we were going to do. I don't know, it just seems like everything stopped after Duncan. You never seemed to be able to get ahead after he was born, your job and all. Where are those plans now, Eddie? I'm 30 years old. I'm not 20 anymore. Oh, listen, honey. Gone. What? Eddie, you know how you used to wrap me up in your arms sometimes? And I'd say I wasn't afraid of anything on earth while you were holding me like that. Yes. You don't wrap me up like that anymore. And I don't say things like that anymore. Because we both know they wouldn't be true anymore. I would be afraid now. It's a horrible thing to have to say. If you think I've gotten so weak that I can't control my own family, get ready. We're going back to Los Angeles tonight. Eddie, when you act like this, it doesn't make you seem strong. It makes you seem weaker. I said get ready! Okay. Mike's heap in my garage again. He must be out of a job. Come on, Duncan. Let's try not to wake Hewlett. Sorry we woke you up, Hewlett. Wet paint, want to tell you, in the kitchen. Oh, Abby, there's wet paint in the kitchen. All right. Well, Eddie, we had a little difference of opinion about whether you'd come back or not. Mike said you wouldn't, I said you would. So that's a quarter he owes me. I knew you'd do the smart thing. Be there when you need it, don't you? Know? Sure. Like I it's always late, say. Louis. Good night. All right. Duncan, come on. I'll hold the door for you, Daddy. Get your bed ready in a minute and watch out for the wet. Oh, Duncan. That's wet paint, honey. It'll wash right out. Will it? Thanks, Nabot. I'll get the rest of the stuff in the morning. Don't let the door slam. You've got to remember, it's one o'clock in the morning. People are trying to sleep downstairs. Now, you see what I mean? I forgot. The way you go in this life, there's always somebody downstairs, and don't forget that. Mama, can I have something to eat? How about a cookie? Good. You forgot to read me high water. Now look, it's after one in the morning. You promised two pages. Ah, uh, you're a hard man, Nevada. All right, sit down. We'll see where your mother put the book. All right. 
it. Now, let's see. We stopped where this fellow Ayagu, the storyteller, had just finished making a bow and some arrows for Hiawatha. And it was a real good bow. And the cord was made out of deerskin, remember? Uh-huh. Let's see. Oh, here we are. We like marching. Okay. Then he said to Hiawatha, Go, my son, into the forest, where the red deer herd together, kill for us a famous roebuck, kill for us a deer with antlers. Oh, we forgot that burgundy in the well. well. Maybe that's where it belongs. Forth into the forest straightway, all alone walked Hiawatha proudly with his bow and arrows. And the birds sang round him, o'er him, do not shoot us, Hiawatha, sang the robin, the opichi, sang the bluebird, the oasa, do not shoot us, Hiawatha. Up the oak tree close beside him sprang the squirrel, Ajidomo, in and out among the branches, coughed and chattered from the oak tree, laughed and said between his laughing, do not shoot me, Hiawatha. And the rabbit from his pathway leaped aside and at a distance sat erect upon his haunches, half in fear and half Dad! in... Dad! Yeah? The rabbit trap! Well? We went off and left our rabbit trap. I say, that's right. We left it set. Well, I guess we did. When the rabbit gets in there, there won't be anybody to get him out. Oh, gee, that's kind of rough, I know, but uh, I didn't even think of that. Well, we did have to leave, Nevada. Time for bed, young Mom, man. Mom, our rabbit's gonna get caught in our trap, and if we don't get him, he'll just have to stay there by himself. Now, look, Nevada, you've got to understand. Darling, don't worry about it. Come on. Say goodnight to your pop and get a good sleep, and tomorrow we'll take care of it. Tomorrow I've got to work. There must be some way. I tell you, there isn't. Darling, we'll do something. We can't do anything. Eddie. Look, we're not gonna lie to him. He's got to understand. Look, Nevada, here's the way it works. Food and, and, and clothing and well, things like paying for the rent, that takes money. And I've got to have a job to make that money because, well, other people like to have that job because they need money too. Do you understand? You see, I got to be sure that my boss would rather have me than somebody else. So when he called for me, I, I knew I had to come. I've got to hold on to that job. so. So I can take care of you and your mom and... But now do you understand? You said we wouldn't hurt that rabbit. You said we'd just make friends with it and then we'd let it go home. But now it'll die. That isn't a very nice thing for us to do, is it? There's somebody up there we can call and describe where the trap is. I couldn't is. describe it in a million years. Well, if I drive up with Duncan... Well, he'd never find it. Look, do you think I like the idea of an animal dying in a trap? You know me better than that. But will you please tell me how I can help it? You could ask for tomorrow off. Look, he wouldn't have called for me if he didn't have to have me. He'd think I was crazy. Maybe if you explained... Spellman is a businessman. It wouldn't hurt to ask. <laughs> He'd die laughing. I think I'd take that chance. Well, you're not me! No.
Abby. Abby. Thanks. Just, uh, just put those down in the bedroom. Yeah. Still asleep? Well, it was pretty late. Yeah. Thought I'd let him sleep. Oh, sure. There's more coffee. Oh, I, I thought I heard him in there. I thought maybe he was awake and just staying in there. He's fast asleep when I got up. Oh. He wouldn't do that. No, I guess he wouldn't. Well, Judy's probably waiting. Have a nice... Have a nice day. I, I just wanted to tell you, I... I did some thinking last night and... Hello in there, all you nice people. I'm Mac and O'Halloran Jr. and I've come to see you. Yes, sir. <laughs> I did quite a bit of thinking last night and, and so I decided that... Well... Good morning. Here comes the painter. Morning, morning, morning. 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 Oh, big boy. Oh, and you got the baby, Mama? Well, yeah, finish, too well. Finish his painting job and get out of your way. Down. Maybe I'd better take him, huh? Oh, no, leave him alone. He's all right. You might as well have another cup of coffee, Eddie, because Judy's going to be a little late. Oh, thanks. Well, Eddie, Judy worked yesterday again. Oh. We don't like all that overtime, do we? No, we don't. No, we don't. After all, yesterday was Sunday. I don't approve of working on Sunday. A job's a job, saying goes. Maybe she got home early, though, for once. Man, well, he's only known her two months. Hardly had time to get a quick... Hi, Abby. Hi, Judy. Hi, Judy. I'm sorry they found you, Eddie. Yeah, me too. Oh, I wish I had a little boy like you. I'll meet you downstairs, Eddie. Okay, Judy. Mom, don't worry, Mom. I'll be home early. Goodbye, Pop. Bye, Judy. I couldn't talk in there. I know. Maybe we ought to go downstairs to their apartment. We have some privacy. We gotta get a house. This is a joke, this dump. Well, I just wanted to tell you. I did a lot of thinking last night uh, uh, about Spellman, and well, I decided that even if he does laugh, I'm I'm going to go ahead and tell him, and well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm sorry I acted the way I did. No, no, no. I I, I get your point. You know. Uh, oh, he'll laugh. He'll probably get a big bang out of it. But well, anyway, uh, I'll be seeing you. You. You didn't get much sleep last night, so eat a good lunch. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Say bye-bye to Eddie. Bye-bye, Eddie. Hi. <laughs> Better not be late. Early bird gets a worm, saying goes. Yeah.
Eduardo. Don Eduardo, how's the boy? Oh, fine. How about you? Oh, you know, hot papa boy. I ain't suffering. You came here for the papers, huh, honey? Uh-huh. Once he's ready by 6 o'clock. I know. Where is he, by the way? He's on the phone with Cochran, getting his daily low blow. Woo! You ought to hear him holler. Should I wait? No, you better go into the office. I may be a one. Eddie. Uh, I wouldn't tackle him right now, boy. I gotta talk to him. You better wait till the barometer's back to normal, huh? Eddie, good luck. Thanks, Judy. Bye. Bye. It's so long. Uh, Judy! Say, uh, I haven't had much chance to talk to you. So? I mean, I, uh, seen you around for a couple of months, but uh, the boss has been taking up all your time. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> what do you think it means? Oh, you wouldn't kid hot papa, would you, honey? Well, these things are a lot. Some latitude, Cochran. I'll be here. Oh, hello, Eddie. Good morning. One minute. Sorry to call you back. Didn't expect you to come to the job, though. Gotta get drawings out on these other two floors at the end of this week. Judy told me. Otherwise, I've never called you back. You understand. That's 835, Eddie. Didn't Judy tell you I wanted you to start on the board? Well, yes, she did, but I had something to talk to you about. Well, you could have got started on the board and talked to me later back at the office. It may sound like a minor point, 30 minutes. Let me give you a quick free lesson in economics. Now, you spent a half hour getting here. A half hour is one sixteenth of an eight hour day, or it's better than 6%. Now, that's my profit on you for the day down the drain. Well, this isn't a reprimand or anything like that, Eddie, but it's something to think about. Now, what's on your mind? Well, I'd, I'd like to explain about coming well, there's out. There's no need to explain, Eddie. It's done. I only mentioned it. Best thing is forget it. Well, it, it's tied in with what I want to talk about. You see, I, I didn't want to give the impression I was going to work today and, and have people count on me. What? Oh, I don't mean I don't want to work. That's what I want to talk about. You trying to tell me you don't want to work today? Well, no, no, I, I want to work, but... Well, what's the trouble? Are you sick? No, uh, you know Duncan. He's my little boy. You know, is he sick? Well, no, he's not sick. No, he's upset about this rabbit trap. You see, we built a rabbit trap up in Deep Springs, and we put it out in the woods, and we, you know, got it all set to catch a rabbit. And then last night, after I got your message, why, we got ready in kind of a hurry and drove right down here, and well, we forgot all about the trap. Oh, that's my fault, Eddie. I'll have one of the fellows at the shop build a kid another trap. You can surprise him with it. Well, I, I appreciate that, but that's not quite what I meant. You see, we left it set. You're way ahead of me, Eddie. Well, what bothers him is that if a rabbit does go in the trap, he'll just have to stay there, and well, who knows... Be what... here. Up there. Eddie, I know how kids are. I got two of my own, don't forget. They can drain a man dry, but rabbits? A dime a dozen. A dime a dozen, they're a nickel a million. In the magazine the other day, the rabbits are about to take over Australia. They got the sheep industry on the run. Rabbits. Oh, I can understand how a kid can get sentimental about one. But if your kid wants a rabbit, you don't have to trap one. I'll buy him a rabbit. I'll buy him two rabbits. I'll put him in the rabbit business. You tell him that when you get home tonight and see how fast he brightens up. I know kids. Oh, this is pretty hard to explain. Look, Eddie, do me a favor. Don't try to explain it now. There's two weeks' work here to be done in one week. I'm interested in kids, and I'd like to talk to you about yours sometime. I'd like to talk to you about your rabbit trap, too, sometime, but not now. I think this is pretty important. I, I feel that... Hey, Pete! Pete! Yeah. Cocker says we got to rip out the petition on this entire floor. Well, we just finished. Put, get him started on it. I'll show you the new changes downstairs. Okay. How's the vacation, Eddie? Oh, swell. Thanks, Pete. Mr. Spellman, I talked it over with my wife, and... Eddie, you've got a sweet wife. She has too much influence over you, but that's your problem. I say that for what it's worth. Now, I love my wife, but she doesn't put her nose in my business. That's our understanding. Not that everybody should be like we are. I don't say that. But it's something to think about. Jerry, if Cochran's man comes around here asking questions, don't tell him anything. Cochran just called me and chewed me up in little pieces. Eddie can help you at the office today and tomorrow, so you can leave Maddie out here with Pete. Check. We'll talk later. Okay, Eddie? But, Mr. Spillman, uh... Eddie, I don't like to cut you off like this, but there's a lot of work to be done back there. Oh, I can take care of it all right, but... Sure you can, Eddie. You're dependable. I like that. It means a lot to me. Does it, Mr. Spellman? Sure. Because I've been thinking... Well, I've been wondering lately if dependability is enough. What's that? I mean about promotions and all. Uh, some guys like Pete 
they've got the education, but yeah. I do have a lot of experience, and, and nothing takes the place of that. You said that yourself. Well, now listen. But like the time I was taking that course in night school, you said school is a great thing, but it isn't everything, and I remember when you said that, and you said you thought I ought to give it up and then quit missing out in that overtime, remember? Pete, the columns and beams in this area will have to be revised. You got the blueprints, Mr. Spellman? I'll have them for you tomorrow. Just start it on it right away, will you? Right. If I had any idea it was going to work against me, I'd never have quit because... Well, then let's get all this talk and get back to work, okay? Okay. Looks like old Steady Eddie got stirred up there for a moment. Never saw him like this before. Get me Franklin Buckley on the phone. I'll be down in a minute. You gonna get the Buckley, John? Call him. Right. You don't want me to take you to the movies, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. Here's your bus fare. There's a dime in case you want a cream soda at the Y. Here are your gym togs and your towel. You be careful swimming and come straight home, all right? All right. Bus now leaving for Bakersfield, Fresno, Stockton, and Sacramento. Chocolate? No, thank you. I thought all little boys love chocolates. No, thank you. Traveling alone, are we? Yes, ma'am. Thank goodness you're a little one to be traveling all by yourself. Visiting relatives? No, ma'am. I have a little grandson about your age, but... I must say, he's never ridden alone in a bus before. Are your parents meeting somewhere? No, ma'am. Not meeting anyone? But you must have a destination. Ma'am? Well, where are you going? I'm going to Deep Springs. Oh? I have an uncle there. I thought you said you weren't visiting relatives. He really isn't my uncle. I just call him uncle. I see. Does he live there? That's right. What does he do? Well, he hunts things. He's a hunter. Really? And he traps things, too. Is that so? He traps all kinds of things. Well, rabbits mostly, I guess. That's right. He's a rabbit trapper. Do your mother and father know you're on this bus? Well, my dad's a very busy man. I mean, with his job and all. Do they know? Well, sure. They sent me to visit my uncle. Quitting time. Think you'll make it? Home stretch. Hey, you've been silent, Sam, all day. Don't let him get you down, Eddie, huh? He's due to find out at 5 o'clock whether or not we got the Buckley job. Say, did I ever tell you your neighbor's a doll? She was hinting to you about me. No, why? No reason. <clears throat> 
Why don't you pick on somebody your size? She is my size. Exactly. Judy, bring your memo pad in here. Ah, you finished? Yeah. It's okay. Judy, take a memo to all employees. Spellman Architects and Engineers will begin installation, Franklin Buckley job, 15th July. Project engineer for this job will be Edward Colt. Sign my name. How about that? <laughs> Memo to Edward Colt. Beginning 1 July, you will assume duties and responsibilities of project engineer with increase in salary of $10 a week. Congratulations, Eddie. Oh, and all your day. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it was a very nice thing to do. Thanks a lot. Congratulations. Oh, that's right. Congratulations. Congratulations. Sorry I couldn't give you more time this morning, Eddie, but that's the way she goes. Here, celebrate. Thank you, sir. Oh, oh let me boy. <laughs> Eddie, I'm a man who appreciates loyalty. I work hard and want to see others work hard. I depend on that. I depend on you, Eddie. Thank you, sir. So let's forget all this talk about your vacation. Okay? Congratulations. Thanks a lot. <laughs> well, who's got a ten buck raise? Hey, I'm not on the two, Eddie. Not a little. You can't kid around with me like that, Judy. I didn't mean to do that. I want to give a week's notice. Okay. Come on in, Judy. We won't oh, fight there, you. There you go. All yours. How about that? Cheers. <laughs> Come on, fellas. Here we go. Hey, here you are, sir. Thank you, Eddie. Great. Cheers. Well, cheers. cheers. Good luck. Oh. Well, let's separate the men from the boys, Eddie. Yeah. Yeah. Let's start. Oh, oh, oh. Go you for all your ill. Boy, I've got to work. Well. Yeah. Yeah. well. That's what. All right, now, who are you? I drive that bus over there. This kid gets on at Los Angeles. He... I wasn't. Huh? I wasn't running away. I don't care what he's doing. Get him out of my truck. Look, Buster, don't yell at me. I didn't put him in there. You get him out. He's your passenger. It's your truck. I got troubles of my own. You've got troubles. Oh, boy. 20 minutes I lose with that flat tire. 20 minutes behind schedule to L.A. and this punk little kid jumps my truck and... Are you going to Los Angeles? If you ever get him out of here. Well, why don't you take the kid with you? Huh? Driving back to Los Angeles. Are you crazy? Are you trying to be a wise guy or something? Well, it's either that or call the cops. All right, call the cops. Call them. Okay. Meanwhile, the kid stays right here. I'm not touching him. I ain't gonna be sued by nobody. Oh, come on, call the cops. Call them. Call them. Talking to you. Yes, sir. Do you have to make all this trouble for me, huh? I'm sorry. Oh, sure, you're sorry. It's a lot of help. Great help. You're sorry. Make you feel better. Okay, okay, so I'm late. Come on, you eat, huh? Come on, that a boy.
Forget the cops, you know cops! Crazy bus drivers! You stayed there so you could drive. <laughs> if I had to drive the way I feel, I'd walk. If I could walk, uh, I could walk. Not straight, maybe, but I could walk. I could get there. If I knew where I was going. <laughs> oh, boy. Old Spellman made like a contest with that booze. Like, like he wanted everybody to race, getting plastered. Like, like, like he was sore about something, you know? I gave him a week's notice. Oh, you're eating dinner. A week's notice. Well, that, that's good. It's none of my business, but that's very good. And that's all I have to say on the subject. Daddy will have plenty to say. Didn't you tell him? Not yet. <sighs> Boy, did that spellman get cracked. <laughs> but quietly cracked, you know? Yeah, strong, silent type. And then the crocketer he got, the stronger and silenter he got. <laughs> you, you quit, huh? Well, Judy, I hear no evil and then speak no evil and then see no evil. And... But I'm glad. I'm very glad you quit, and, and that's all I have to say on the subject. He was looking pretty mean there when we left. I'm glad he didn't get that way before he gave me my raise. Ten smackaroos! There he is! Hey, hey, hey! Oh, wonderful! Hey, hey! Hey, hey! Hey, hey! Hey, hey! Hey, hey! Well, that's it's after six. He's swimming on Mondays. He's always late. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Mike! Oh, baby, are we proud of you? Have you ever met a real live project engineer? Hey, Pop, give him a beer, Pop. Oh, thanks, baby. Boy, am I glad Judy was there to drive me home. <laughs> oh, he's a project engineer. How'd you do? Ultimatum? I bet he gave you an ultimatum. Give me a razor like quit. Right, Eddie? Oh, Eddie's got more sense than that. He didn't have to give any what do you call it. He had a raise coming when the time came, he got it. You ought to take a lesson from Eddie, Mike. Work someplace till you get a little seniority. They find out you're steady, don't you know? Eddie, can I get something out of your apartment to show Mike? Oh, sure. Hey, hey, you know that guy, Jerry. Well, he's drinking to me, see? And his cup slips right out of his hand. He doesn't even know it. <laughs> hey, Eddie, boy! You did it. I know you did it. On account of he wouldn't have shook loose if you didn't. Right, Eddie boy? Come here, honey. Now listen to me, fella. I'm sick of your stuff, and I'm tired of your gut. You've been making a mat out of me for the last 99 years. I'm up to here with you and the whole cheesy operation. <laughs> now get this through that thick ivory skull. Oh, um, I want to be a project I, I, engineer. I brought up the rabbit trap to, 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 to Spellman. And... Raise? And I want to like I said, Spellman is a businessman. It's all right. You understand? Or else. I understand. Hey, Ed. Is that about what you said, huh? <laughs> hey, hey, wait a minute, everybody. Abby and me, we got an announcement to make. Huh? We're gonna have a baby. Oh, a baby? A little girl named Kathy. Oh, when, Abby? When? <laughs> That's a secret. <laughs> well, why didn't you tell us before? Well, we just found out. <laughs> well, what is it, seven months? Longer. Eight months? Nine, honey. <laughs> That's what I call self-confidence, oh. <laughs> Mike, I want you to read what it says on here. The whole thing is right here. How to win your employer's respect. Hey, Nevada! Hey! Hey, here comes Nevada! Come on, Nevada, high fly! Hey. Well, gee, let me handle that. <laughs> What's the matter, Nevada? I didn't see it. Oh, I was a wild throw anyway. You couldn't catch me with all that gym clothes now, could you? Huh? Uh -uh. <laughs> Come on. How was the why, huh? Fine. Uh, how about a drink, Nevada Slim? No, thanks. 
Oh, come on. I got some grape soda just for you. Oh, Julie, I haven't yeah, dinner yet. Oh, dinner, Slim. A little, little. I'm not thirsty. Well, you, you don't, don't have to have any if you don't want some. Of course he does. Show me the boy doesn't like grape soda. Oh, who was it, Judy? I, uh, I have to go back to work tonight, so I better... No. No, you don't. Look, Mom, I still work there. You are not going back to that office tonight. Mother, I gave my notice, a week's notice. You what? You quit your job? You stay out of this now. What do you mean you quit your job? You don't just up and quit a job. A job is a job. Money is money. But Daddy, couldn't we talk about it some other time? I'll take the bus. Judy? You take the baby. Come on, little one. Come on, little one. Oh, come on. Judy! Now, you listen to me. There's not any need. If you gave your notice, there's no call to do this kind of thing. Jobs don't grow on trees. Now, what is she? Judy! Judy! Let's just go upstairs, huh? Yeah. Come on, Doc. Pat, we gotta go upstairs and have dinner. She finally gave me the baby one time. <laughs> hey, hey, wait a minute, Eddie. The party, honey. Have I'll be here. down later. If this is the same year, I'll be down. Yeah. I'm gonna get drunk. Is he blind? You can't go down there with him. He's drunk. Don't you get it? They won't do any work. Work. Don't <laughs> talk about it now, Eddie. Well, I just don't get it. Yeah, but just don't talk about it now. Well, Nevada, I'm glad to see the old YMCA still doing business. Same old Stan. Now, let's see. Um, today's Monday. Now, what do they have on Monday, huh? Well, swimming. Oh? And basketball. Gym, too, huh? Did you go swimming? Uh-huh. Well, how'd you get your hair so dry? Well, I just dried it. Duncan. I didn't exactly go swimming. I just watched. I thought you said you went in. Nothing wrong with not going swimming, darling. What made you say you did? I guess I just forgot. If you don't have the idea that you're supposed to do these things just because they're on the schedule. Today was basketball and swimming. It just means you can do those things if you want to. You don't have to. Did you play basketball? Uh-huh. No, let me have the gym shorts. I'll throw them in the wash. Doc, can you have more than these? I ironed them just before you left this afternoon. You haven't even had them on. Look. Did you go to the Y this afternoon? You didn't, did you? Where were you all afternoon? Duncan, what did you do this afternoon? Now, answer me. Well, come on, answer your mother. Duncan! I was on a bus. A bus? You mean you rode around in a bus all afternoon? I don't get it. What's the idea? Where'd you go? No place. Well, what made you get on a bus for crying out loud? Riding around in a bus all afternoon, that's crazy, Nevada. Now, what made you do a thing like that? Well, now, wait a minute here. Let me talk to him a minute. He's never lied. He's never lied to me before. Now, why should he do a thing like that? Now, why? Who knows who might have picked him up? Who knows what might have happened to him? Riding around in a bus? Well? He was trying to get back to Deep Springs. promotion in eight years, and this is what I gotta do to get it. Spellman gives me one lousy... He 
know what he did this morning when I asked him? He annihilated me. He started off by bawling me out for wasting 30 minutes to come out on a job. He said that was his profit on me for the day. I, I never heard it put that way, and it made me feel kind of, kind of silly. After I got out of there, I realized he wasn't supposed to be making a profit on me today. I was supposed to be on my vacation. But I didn't think of that while I was talking to him. Even if I had, I... I wouldn't have said it. I just crawled away. This thing. Oh, brother. Shaped like a T square. Now, oh, isn't that a clever award? Citation to Ever Ready Steady Eddie Colt. Didn't miss a day's work or come in late for five years. You know, I've been hating this thing ever since I got it, and I didn't even know it. Ever Ready Steady Eddie. That does it. We're going back to Deep Springs. Eddie, listen to me. Now listen to me. You've been drinking, and you're upset. Yeah, I'm upset. Eddie, we've got to think. Well, I'm taking him back. Please don't tell him now. I want him to know Eddie, that. Please wait. I'm taking him back. I want him to know that. Please go in there. We can't hear you. Eddie, look, if you tell him you're going to take him back, you're just going to make things worse, because we can't go back. Who says? We're going back, and not just for that rabbit, either. We're spending the week, and if Spillman doesn't like it, he knows what he can do. Eddie, listen to me. Now, listen, I was wrong. I never dreamed Spellman would give you that promotion. I thought he was going to go on using you and taking advantage of you and giving you more citations. But he did give you that promotion just... just by being what you are. You got the raise, and... and we're going to have Kathy, we hope. We, we can plan things. And they know what we are and where we are. And what about him? Or doesn't it matter? As long as I get my lousy raise, who cares about him? Is that it? Oh, brother. Eddie, when you called this afternoon, when I found out we weren't going to Deep Springs, I cried. Not even the promotion could take that away. I was just as miserable as you are now. But the more I thought about it, the more I realize that somewhere along the line, we've got to start accepting ourselves for what we are. Either we're ordinary people or we're not, and we can't stay torn up all the time, can we? Eddie. Eddie Duncan wouldn't have run away if I'd backed you up last night. I, I should have made him face reality, and I... I could have made him understand. Instead, I just made the whole thing a whole lot bigger, but... I was just awful, that's all. I didn't even try to understand. I just acted like a baby because everything wasn't going the way I wanted it. I ought to get down on my knees and thank God for what I've got instead of complaining all the time. Instead of tearing you apart. You're good. And you're kind. You work hard, you never complain. And I love you. Please. It's not the end of the world.
don't have much to say today, do you? Uh, I didn't sleep too good last night. I know. Eddie. going up. Please? Is this what I am? I don't want to be this. I've got a handkerchief. Eddie, I'm not that kind of person. What happened to me? Just oh, Judy. It's not like he was my boyfriend or anything like that. It wasn't anything he did. It's just Eddie. I'd rather get hurt with somebody I feel good with than just go along with nothing. Wipe your face. Sometimes people need somebody that they can go to that won't just disappear when you try to get a hold of them. I know it's not right. And I wish I didn't go to him. But I do. I don't believe anything could hurt me when I'm with him. Last night, well, everything's all mixed up again. Eddie, tell me what I should do. Golly, Judy, I, I don't know. You, you'll have to decide for yourself. I know now what I've got to do. Except our dimensions. We've got problems, Eddie. Jerry's going to be a little late, but I can get you started on the new stuff. Get Pete on the phone. Come in here. I sent Jerry out to do something for me that'll give you quite a kick, Eddie. Now, let's see. Start at column 32. Could I tell you are. something? What? I have to tell you something. All right, tell me. It's pretty important. More important than this? I think so. Well, I don't think so, but say it. I'm going back to Deep Springs. Yo, what? I'm going back to Deep Springs this morning. You're not going anywhere. I've got to. You've got a nerve. I'd like to explain. Explain? Did you see that man just walk out of here? He cut my throat from ear to ear. Cochran is bleeding me to death, and you come in here again with some screwball talk about a rabbit. Well, I'd like to explain before well, I... let me explain something to you. If you walk out on me in the middle of this job, you stay out. For good. Well, if you mean that... I... I do. If you mean that, I, I think you should make an effort to see my point of view. Why? Because suddenly you're a project engineer? Because I'm a person. Well, I guess I haven't been giving you much credit for that, have I? No. I could listen to you to start with, and we'd be done with it. 
All right, Eddie, what's your problem? Well, it's complicated. A lot of things enter into it. Well, for one thing, Abby has always felt that I haven't had enough vacation Let's time. get to the main problem. Well, this is all tied in. It's hard to nail down to one thing. I guess the main thing is... I know you're going to laugh, and... I hope I can make you understand. The main thing is the rabbit trap. But we went through this. Oh, I didn't make it clear yesterday. You see, it's not only a matter of a rabbit being caught in a trap. It's also a matter of, of what Abby and Duncan think of me. What I think of myself. If I want Duncan to grow up with any kind of principles, I have to set the example. Eddie, one of the things I've always liked about you is you're sentimental. I'm sentimental myself about my own family. But take my word for it, Eddie. Kids don't know or care anything about principles. You give a boy a bag of marbles and he'll forget the biggest broken promise in the world. I know. I didn't raise two kids without learning a few things. But he thinks a rabbit is starving to death. He'll forget trip. it. You'll take him something. But I don't want him to forget it. Look, Eddie, let's stop kidding each other, shall we? You're not going anywhere and you know it. You knew it when you came in here. Your wife's been putting you up to things again. I'm not dumb enough to be taken in by a sob gag like that. There's money at stake, big money. Now, you know and I know you're not going to walk out in a new promotion and a raise just to get a lousy rabbit out of a lousy trap. Now, I'm a man of principle, too, up to a point. You tell your wife that going back to Deep Springs would have cost you your job, and if she doesn't believe it, tell her to call me and I'll confirm it. That ought to take you off the hook at home. Now, here. I want you to take these. I, I can't. I said take them, Eddie. I'm getting plenty sick of this. Guys like you are a dime a dozen. And I'm not going to stand here all day and beg you to hold on to your job. If you don't want it, get out. I'm telling you for the last time, Eddie, take these drawings and start sizing them up to standard. From 32 over to the shafts. Here. Big game hunters here. Now, let's forget we had a disagreement and try to get this job done. Okay? Bring it in. I want you to see this, Eddie. for your kid. Be careful, he's frightened. Look at the collar. It's engraved. A collar? Well, what do you think, Eddie? Huh? Well, it's for you. I, I don't get it. Well, when your kid sees this, huh? Oh, you're cute. Well, is this some kind of a joke? I don't think this is funny. I don't think this is funny at all. Funny? What are you talking about? Four bucks for a rabbit, six fifty for a cage, three fifty for a collar? Look at this color. Look at it. Read what it says. Well, whose idea was this? It's a pretty stupid joke. Whose idea was it to name him that? A pretty warped sense of humor, if you ask me. Eddie. Wait a minute. Am I supposed to laugh? Am I supposed to think Eddie Colt is a funny name for a rabbit? Eddie, 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 hold the phone. You're all fouled up. What do you mean I'm all fouled up? That's what it says. Isn't that what it says? Eddie Colt. That doesn't mean it's named Eddie Colt. The name on the collar is the name of the owner. That means it belongs to Eddie Colt. It's just a collar, like on a dog. In case your rabbit gets lost, don't you get it? It's got your address on there, too. It's like a license on a dog, only this is no ordinary stamped out piece of copper junk like on a dog. This is engraved, brother. I told you I'd fix it with your kid, didn't I? You beat that. Thought we named it Eddie. He's so scared. What made you think we named it Eddie? It was a pretty funny mistake to make, wasn't it? I I guess I better be going. What? I'm going home. I'm taking Abby and Duncan back to Deep Springs. You walk out and you're through. When I say that, Eddie, I mean it. Yeah. I know. Eddie? He's flipped. He'll be back. Hat in hand. Hello, honey. Uh-huh. 
I just wanted to tell you, I, I talked to him just now, and, and you can go ahead and start packing, because, yeah, that's right. Because he said he understood, and, yeah, that, that's what he said, and we should go on up there and have a good time and, and not worry about a thing. So that's the story. So I'm on my way there, okay? Okay, honey, and, and honey, tell Nevada, huh? Okay. Oh, for Pete's sake, Eddie, use your head. Eddie! Didn't think he had the guts. I'm proud of him. That wasn't an easy thing to do. Get on the phone, give me another man. days, a good 48 hours if we caught one right away. You better stand back with Duncan, just in case. Wait a minute, Nevada. Wait for us. Eddie? Yeah? Why didn't you tell me? Huh? Spellman fired you, didn't he? How'd you know? I know you. And you on the phone, you weren't telling the truth. Well, I thought you should have your vacation without worrying about... It's down here, over this way. Wait a minute, Nevada. Better let me take a look, Duncan. Duncan, you stay here with me. job and <laughs> no rabbit. <laughs> Are you afraid? Why should I be? Not if I wrap you up in my arms, remember? <laughs> I remember. What should I do with this thing? Hey, uh, you remember that apple tree we passed? Mm-hmm. Well, why don't we all go up and pick some apples? I think that'd make a wonderful apple crate. Okay. You know there's still a bottle of burgundy in the well. Well, come on. What are we waiting for? Let's celebrate. Come on, sweetheart. I can't climb the hill with this thing. Well, you just wait for us, Nevada. Come on, boy. Here we go. Mm -hmm. 